From this to this. Today, I'm going to show you my seven step process for how I fully restore my leather boots. And we are going to do it in real time. In this methodical video guide, I will walk and talk you through every single step and detail such that by the end of this video, you can do it too, even if you have never touched a shoe care product before. Thursday, Grant Stone, Red Wing, this process will work for any boot that has a real full grain leather upper. Lastly, if you find this video helpful and want to support the creation of more videos like it, my affiliate links to everything I'm showing here are down in the description below and come at no extra cost to you. You don't have to use them, but if you choose to do so, thank you so very much. All right, so starting off this seven step process, guys, we are going to wipe the boot. So I've got here just a basic cotton towel. I've got like 20 of them. I stole them from a restaurant I worked at like 10 years ago. I'm sorry, John. We're just going to gently rub the shoe. So I'm actually gonna unfold this once. And the purpose of this is to get off any surface debris on the shoe, any like bigger particles. So you'll notice I'm not really rubbing into the shoe. It's pretty broad. I'm just sort of letting my hand fall onto it. And that's because the reason we wanna get off any big particles is because in a moment, we're going to rub a little bit harder and we wanna make sure that we don't have any large particles or small pieces of gravel or anything like that that might scratch the leather more than we really need to. So pretty light, we're just going over the whole boot here, including the welt. One thing you'll note on wetness is it's okay if there's some streaks on the boot. This is just a damp towel. I just used water from my sink. It's okay if there's like streaks on the boot, but what you don't want is there to be water left over on it, right? This should be just a damp towel. It shouldn't be wet. So I like to just run the towel under a sink faucet, just a strip of the towel, and then wring it out to distribute the water within it. You should not be wringing out water from this towel. Nothing should be falling out, right? It shouldn't be that wet. So we're just gonna go over the whole boot. And again, this is a very basic cotton towel. I'm not even sure it's like 100% cotton. It probably is. It's nothing special. It doesn't need to be special. You just need to make sure it's cleaned. You know, if you can stick with a softer towel, that's better. Like what you probably don't wanna use is like a terry towel, something you get real cheap from Home Depot. Just because those towels are a little abrasive, I'm sure you'd be fine, but Personally, I'd stick with something that's at least a little bit softer. So again, we're just going over the whole boot here. I'm even taking a little more time than I really need to. Hitting the heel as well. And now that we've gotten the whole boot pretty good, we're gonna hit the welt. So I like to just take a tiny bit of cloth and just sort of scrunch it up like that. You know, I've got my hand in it though. And just sort of insert it here into the welt and try to really squeeze into that little groove where the welt meets the upper. And just, now you wanna get a little bit more firm to really get in there. And we're gonna go all around. And you see how dirty that gets? So we're just gonna switch to a separate part of the towel. And go all around. And I've got shoe trees in here. You don't have to, but I do suggest putting your shoe trees in or boot trees if you got them are great too. You're gonna want something that's a bit firm to help press back against the towel and against all the other products we're gonna use on this shoe. So that's good for the moment. You could do it again if you want, just depends on how dirty it is. This one is pretty dirty, so I'll probably go over it again in a second. But first what I'm gonna do is fold it up. And now we're gonna go over this a second time. So now we're gonna be pretty firm, right? And you know, you don't need to press hard, harder than is reasonable, but we're gonna be pretty firm here. Now we really wanna make sure this boot is cleaned on the outside. Again, the purpose of this step 
is to clear the boot surface of any physical debris so that that doesn't get trapped on the boot when we use our later products, right? Because when we condition the boot, when we put oils on it, we don't want that stuff. We don't want any dirt or dust or surface oils to get sucked into the pores of the leather along with our product. So we really want to make sure the outside is nice and clean. And that includes the welt, that includes the heel block. So I'm just switching to clean parts of the towel as I go along. If you felt so inclined, you could use uh, switch towels altogether. And then uh, you want to hit the goring here of the Chelsea boot as well, if you have a Chelsea with goring. Even if this is pretty dirty for you, you could get even a another towel that's a bit more wet to help flush out the pores of this textured goring. That's okay to get this a little wet. You just want to make sure you don't get that uh, a lot of water on the leather or in the stitching. But this goring is pretty all right. Usually I find that on the heel and the welt, there's stuff pretty stuck on, so I'll get pretty aggressive. Uh, you especially can get aggressive on those parts of the boot. So again, in general, you don't really, you wanna to try to avoid exposing your leather footwear to water. But given we're at the start of the conditioning process and it's only a damp water and we're doing like a full restoration here, I personally have never found it to be much of an issue. I think that you just wanna be as minimal as you can. So again, I'm being pretty aggressive on the welt and the heel block here. And then I'm gonna go for one more round hitting the where the welt meets the upper. Again, this part can get pretty dirty, so I really tried to get in there. You could hit this with like maybe a toothbrush too if you really wanted to, although a toothbrush won't really like pick lift dirt the way a cloth will, but it may at least loosen it. Some people would use a brush for this step. I personally, first of all, I don't really want to buy a whole separate brush just for like dusting, just for like cleaning dirt. I shouldn't say dusting, like cleaning dirt off boots because then you basically can't use that for anything else because it's got dirt trapped in the brush, in the bristles. And honestly, I, I'd argue that it probably doesn't do as good as job as a damp cloth, you know, so, because uh, it might brush stuff off, but Again, it, it can't quite lift dirt or dust from the surface of the shoe in the way that like a damp cloth can. So that's it, you know, you could go over if you felt so inclined. I wouldn't be worried, especially when you're getting down the welt where you're being kind of aggressive. I wouldn't worry too much about like doing it until the cloth is comes out clean, like you might if you're cleaning countertop. The reason for that is there may just be like dyes or natural finish on the welt and your cloth will eventually start picking that up, which you don't necessarily want it to. Lastly, what I like to do on this step, you don't have to, I like to do it just because why not? Uh, I'll actually just clean the sole as well. So I won't get too obsessive about this, right? I'll just kind of give it a quick rub. You know, why do I do this? Kind of because why not? Because they're leather soles, they don't quite like track dirt and like gunk the way rubber soles do. So I find it kind of easy as well. I wouldn't consider that necessary, but it's a nice step just to clean up the bottom of the shoe. So now there's a little bit of water in this and we wanna let it dry a little bit. In Colorado where it's quite dry, I'll probably just give this an hour before we come back to it. You know, if you're somewhere a little more humid, maybe you could give it two or three hours. You don't have to worry too much about drying time. Maybe you do this in the morning and then you come back after work and do the next step. Don't stress out too much about it. Before we move on to our next step, the first thing I wanna point out to you guys is just take a look at this boot. So this is uh, this has been really beat up, right? I mean, I've literally scraped it against a tree. I've walked around up in the mountains filming with these on. Dust, dirt, gravel. I mean, these have really been treated in a way that you shouldn't be treating uh, Chelsea's 
But even still, the leather is still pretty well preserved, even on some areas of the toe cap where it's not super hardly hard scuffed. What I think that is, is kind of just a testament to how much protection proper shoe care gives the leather. When you wipe it down, little bits of lint will get left over on the leather. So I like to just hit it quickly with a dry towel, just a clean dry towel, and that'll get off any remaining lint. So now we are going to clean the leather. So this is actually, we're gonna use a product that gets into the pores of the leather and again, lifts out any like micro particles of dirt or oils, environmental oils or salts, things of that nature that get a little deeper into the leather. I like to use this product here. This is Paul Brengard's Reviving Cream. Paul Brengard is a Swedish company. You can get this from Arterton, which is a London retailer. This also doubles as a conditioner as well. So we're kind of lightly cleaning and lightly conditioning the leather. So I've got a cloth here. This is just a cotton cloth. It could be a t-shirt from Walmart. It could be just a swath of cloth that you get from say a fabric store. This is about 12 inches long. I'd suggest you go with something like 16. I have it doubled over here as well. And we're gonna wrap our finger in this. So just start with your two fingers over one end like that. Grab the other end, kind of pinch it around, and then wrap it around your finger, and then tuck it in through the loop, and pull it down and back. And then you can kind of just adjust it by pulling down that front end, pulling down that back end a little bit, push down that loop. Occasionally you might just want to pull it tight again, but now you're all set. We're just gonna take small dabs here. Okay, small dabs like that. It's like, I don't know, a water droplet, right? Could be even less. Again, the big thing, the big theme with all of these products is to use less than you think you need because you can always add more. So we're just gonna go in here and we're going to do this in a patchwork fashion. Just work in small patches. You know, be patient, guys. This is a great thing to do while you're watching a movie, eating dinner, maybe you're making love to your partner, great time to do your shoe care. So you can see how that's starting to lift dirt off the boot that a wet cloth itself might not. This is also good for kind of like clearing the leather of any old waxes or anything like that. So again, we're just gonna keep going around the boot like that. Again, be pretty firm, be pretty thorough. You're not gonna hurt the leather by pressing too hard. So don't be worried about that, but obviously don't overdo it. You know, rubbing an egg, uh, you know, firmly, as firmly as you can without breaking it is an analogy I've used in the, pa in the past. For all the egg rubbers out there, you know who you are. And again, just get down. The nice thing about having it wrapped taut around your fingers, you can really get down into that welt. Once again, similar to the cloth, don't worry too much about getting it so the cloth is totally clean. I mean, if you have a really dirty boot like this one, you might wanna switch sections of the cloth halfway through the boot, but otherwise, it's not a counter. You're not trying to get it totally clean. If you get too aggressive with this, you know, you can start to strip the color of the leather. So just be patient, take it slow, and don't use too much product. Again, everything I'm showing you here, guys, it's pretty risk-free, it's pretty hard to mess up, but you know, you can do too much. You don't wanna oversaturate the leather, you don't wanna put just put a ton of this stuff on, more is not necessarily better, be patient just use a little bit and then look at the boot afterwards and assess if you want to do a little bit more. Leather is really forgiving. That's the beauty about this material. You know, you really have to kind of try to mess this stuff up really badly.
I also like to actually apply quite a bit of pressure here on the vamp where there's creases. Not that it'll do a whole lot, but it's nice, a nice moment when you have the shoe tree in. The leather is a little more loose because of the product we're hydrating it with. So it's a nice time to just kind of press down a little more firm to help iron out those creases a little bit and just restore the shape of the leather a, a little bit. And already, I mean, this is looking substantially better, right? Part of it's because it's also wet with the product, so that darkens up the areas that are scuffed. But even now, you can see how these boots are already uh, really back to life just from a quick wipe and this conditioner cleaner. And you'll see how I'm pretty casual about this, guys, right? So I'm working in rough patchwork fashion, but you'll notice there are areas where sometimes I overlap. Sometimes I do an area that overlaps maybe two or three times, but that's okay. Again, this stuff is all very forgiving. So about now you can see how dirty the cloth is. Not too bad, but again, just because I know these boots are like super dirty, I'm gonna switch up areas of the cloth. Just gonna adjust my fingers a little bit. Again, we're gonna go around, right? I'm gonna go around and then tuck it in. And then we're gonna pull down and then around the back. And now we're nice and taut. Tell me if you guys like these tutorials, if you like them. I feel bad because like maybe it's a little bit low effort content, but it's also like I feel like it's a nice kind of tutorial to just have out there for the person who appreciates this kind of thing. You know, when I learned about this stuff, it was watching a lot of like 10, 20 minute, I'm sorry, like five, 10 minute videos of like each step of the process and not a whole lot of videos that really show just the whole thing in one way through. And even I, I've made kind of those five, 10 minute videos and I think they're good for what they are, but I also think it's nice to have a video that just showcases the entire thing so that people get a really good grip of like, how long should it take? How, like, what does it look like when you have a little like mistake or, and how do you remedy that? Or all the little like details of the whole process. Right, so again, just small dabs. This stuff also has a really nice smell. It's just like a really light kind of clean, clean fragrance to it. I don't know that it's an actual fragrance like added. It might just be a byproduct of the actual scent of the products, but like a lot of shoe care item products can often have sort of a turpentine smell. So, which, you know, some people can be bothered by. Um, it, so that's just a small, nice boon of this reviving cream, which I quite like. So it looks great. That simple.
I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the welt and the heel block actually. I'm not sure I would do this like regularly. Um, I'm doing it here because I know they're quite dried out and honestly they could probably use both the cleaning and like the mild conditioning of the surviving cream. So I'm not gonna, I even used a little bit much there, but I'm not gonna use a ton of this stuff here on the heel block and sole edge but I just want to hit it lightly. Kind of missed a little bit on the back there too. So again, the leather is a little bit darker, so it looks like the color is restored, but that's just because it's hydrated. The color has not been restored, and once this dries out overnight, we'll see that it's probably it'll probably get a little bit lighter again in those areas where it's scuffed up. Now I'm doing this on the sole edge and the welt, but again, I wouldn't do this on the sole bottom. I don't think that's necessary. I'm I would be concerned it might actually hurt the boot as well because you really don't want the bottom of that sole to be hydrated, right? You don't want the leather there to be soft. You want it to be pretty stiff and hard, right? Because you don't want it to erode away. Part of why I'm doing these, so this sole edge here is because you can see it's curling up. That's because it's drying, the, the welt edge, the sole edge is drying and it's thicker and drying faster than the actual bottom of the sole, which is causing it to shrink at a rate that is faster than the actual sole bottom. And that is why it's sort of curling up like this. Again, the most important thing for me in a video like this, even though it might not be the most manicured video, is to really give you a good image. Everything I'm doing here, you could do if you have never touched a shoe care product before in your life. And that's specifically why we're not gonna be touching like alcoholic dyes today. All of these products are super forgiving. If you just follow some of the basic guidance I'm giving you here, you pretty much can't go wrong. Everything I'm doing, you can totally do. And you can do to any boot, you can do to any dress shoe, you know, the boot looks great. We're pretty darn cleaned here, which is great. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes, and then we're gonna give it a brush. You may have noticed during our last step that there were moments where some cream got a little bit built up or left over in areas, perhaps where the leather overlapped here, maybe it got a little bit down here in the joint between the welt and the upper. The purpose of brushing the shoe primarily is to distribute product evenly. So all that leftover small bits and pieces that may have not been perfectly distributed on the shoe, this is where we fix that. The second byproduct that occurs from brushing is that it pulls out a soft shine from products with waxes in it. So very simple here. This brush is a luxury handmade brush from Swedish company Paul Brungard. This is amazing. It's awesome if you're in the market, if you're interested in spending, you know, 50, 60 bucks for a luxury brush. This one is the best that I've found. I mean, there's only like two, three, four vendors who make luxury brushes, uh, but this is great. But you don't need it. You can do just like a budget option or a more affordable option. I'll have a couple links in the description for those and they'll do the job just as well. So here, the key is long brush strokes, right? So we're gonna do kind of every direction here so we can hit the shoe at every angle, do the sole edge and the uppers all over. Kind of rotate the brush as you're hitting this front area where you go up really high into the ankle on a Chelsea. What you don't wanna do is short stunted brushes like that. You don't wanna do that, you don't wanna tap it, nothing like small like that. You wanna really make sure the brushes are flattening out and rubbing against the whole thing evenly. So long brush strokes on this, okay? 
Make sure to really get in between the welt and the upper there as well with the corner of the brush. Again, all these steps I'm taking a little bit of extra time with as I'm talking and also just making sure to show everything very clearly. But everything here can be done, you know, a fair bit even faster than what I'm showing. And that's it. So look how great these look. We're not even halfway done. And these already, they've got a nice bit of color back. They're much cleaner overall. And they've even got like a nice soft shine back. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let this sit overnight, okay? Between the water from the wiping and from this product, the Reviving Cream, which does hydrate the leather, kind of saturate it quite a bit. We want this to fully dry out before we move forward with our next step. We are back, it is the next day, and it is actually the next day. It's not just been a couple hours and I've started shooting again. And the reason I say that is because just take a look at the boot here. I sort of underestimated the reviving cream myself. I thought it was going to dry out a little bit overnight and then the light color from where it was scuffed would come back. But you can see it's actually fully stayed darkened permanently one, it's a testament to the fact that that stuff does really condition. But also, if you were in a rush and say you just needed to get these really filthy boots you have back into shape so that you can take them out somewhere, you could take these out. These look great. You know, they have a little bit of wear on them. Boots, it's pretty acceptable for them to look a little more worn than dress shoes anyways. You could even take them out yesterday after maybe just letting them sit for a couple hours. But nonetheless, I still do not suggest stopping there. I suggest actually going through the whole process, which we're going to do right now, starting with this. This is Saphir Renovator. It's a great product. There's other conditioners out there that are pretty good too. This is my favorite. This is where we really sort of deeply condition the leather of the boot. Very simple, not a whole lot, right? Just a tiny bit on my finger. You have to remember guys, again, too much can cause problems. So always use very little and you can always add more. And once again, for reference, one jar of this stuff, of any of these products I'm showing you guys today, should last several years, even if you have a few pairs of boots or shoes. That's how little you should be using, okay? And it, even that's like a little bit gratuitous. I would use even less than that for like a dress shoe for doing routine maintenance. The reason I'm being a little bit heavy with this, again, is because this boot was quite dried out, so I really wanna make sure it's fully back to restored and in good condition. I'm using my fingers here as opposed to a cloth just to give a little more control and precision and also a little more firm direct pressure to really press that oil deep into the pores of the leather. It's not super important that you have like really even distribution on this. That's what a cloth is really good for, which we'll use later for when we're using dyed products. For this stuff, I consider it more important to really get that firm pressure to press it deep into the leather. Now I wanna explain a little bit what conditioning leather really does. I actually have a background in tanning. I used to tan quite a bit when I was younger. I tanned, uh, did a lot of brain tanning. So I'm not, you know, an expert on leather by any means, but I do feel like I have some ability to speak to what's going on here. I've seen a lot of people talk about this online, about conditioning leather. They've used terms like nutrients or minerals or nourishing the leather. And I think it's really important to understand those terms feel a little misleading to me. The leather is not alive, right? It's not eating, it's not feeding on this stuff. It's an organic material, but it's not alive. You're not, you're not nourishing it in the same way you're like nourishing a living organism. Really fundamentally what you're doing on a base level is you are 
lubricating the fiber structure of this material. So leather is basically just made up of a bunch of fibers. It's mostly collagen fibers, it's all sorts of stuff, but that's essentially the structure of this is like a ball of spaghetti, right? It's all these different fibers and uh, they're kind of packed together and just sort of jumbled together. And much like a ball of spaghetti, you know, if you let it dry out completely, it'll form basically like a briquette, right? A hard briquette, kind of like a brick of ramen noodles that you buy at the store, those cheap square ramen noodle packs. And they're hard, they're stiff. If you try to bend them, they'll break, which is why if leather dries out and you try to bend it, it will crack, which is why doing this is so important. And a fully dried ball of spaghetti is a lot like rawhide. Right, so a rawhide bone you buy your dog, for example, which is effectively just taking skin and letting it sit and dry out. It turns into a hard board. On the other hand, if you take that rawhide bone and you put it in a bowl of water and let it sit for a long time, eventually it'll become loose and floppy, just like a soft, loose cloth or something. And that is analogous to putting that briquette of spaghetti into a bowl of water, and then it becomes really loose and floppy and all the spaghetti noodles just kind of like move freely within each other. See that? There you go, guys. That's talk about reality. I just scratched the boot with my nails. I was gliding it over, but that's okay. That'll come out. And so what we're doing here is kind of something in between, right? We're sort of like lubricating the spaghetti noodles so that they're not super loose, that they just kind of like flop around everywhere. They're, they're firm enough that it holds its structure, that the last of the boot holds its shape. It doesn't just fall apart, fall down and collapse on itself. So it's firm enough to hold its structure, but it's also soft enough to flex without cracking and without breaking. And that's what conditioning is, right? So we're like lubricating the collagen matrix, the fiber matrix that composes this material that is leather. I think it's just an interesting note. And that's why you kind of hear things like brain tan or oil tan. These are processes that involve embedding, impregnating the leather with oil. And that keeps it perfectly flexible for a very long time. Factoids with Chris. Tiffer. Chris isn't here right now. Chris is in the basement this time around. Again, we're gonna be brushing after this, so do your best to evenly distribute, but don't stress about it. Just do your best. One last note as I'm wrapping up the last panel here. Always make sure, guys, I'm not doing it here. Of course, I'm very familiar with these products, and these products should do well for basically any leather product. But always, always test these products before you use them if you're not sure on an inconspicuous area of your boot, of your shoe. Often that can be like under the, under the lacing system, so like on the tongue of a dress shoe, or it can be just like on the inside here where no one will notice, just like on the underside where the upper wraps under, because you just never know, and it's always good to check, make sure that your shoe or boot won't have a negative reaction to these products. If you are using a shoe or boot that uses crust leather or has a patina on it, 
those are circumstances where you might want to be a little more careful or have a slightly different routine. You know, if you don't know what crust leather is, then your shoe or boot probably isn't crust leather. It'll say it very clearly on the website, and that's usually like several hundred, like we're talking shoes over four, over $500. And uh, same thing with patina shoes. If you're ever in doubt, if you just, you know, contact the manufacturer and say, hey, is it crust leather? Is there a patina on it? So on and so forth. What we're going to do is just let this sit for, I'd say, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then we're going to come back and give it a brush. So now we're back, and just like before, we're going to take our horsehair brush and go ahead just give this a quick brush and you can see how quickly this starts to shine up so a product like Saphir Renovator not only does it have oils to actually condition the leather to lubricate those fibers but it also has some soft waxes in it which when brushed will create a soft shine like this and that's why it's such a great product I think I really like Renovator because it is one of those things where you know, we're exploring a lot of products in this video, and many of them do many different things, but the Renovator is really a great all-purpose kind of product where it gives you a shine, it gives you, uh, you know, conditioning of the leather. Some people, you can use it even if you want to kind of lightly clean the leather. I don't know how I feel about that, but it, you know, it could, in theory, serve that function. But it's great. And there we are. Okay, so we still have more work to do on the uppers themselves, but what we're first going to do is address and restore the sole edge here. The first thing we want to do is restore the color to the sole edge, right? And so the best way to restore color on a shoe is to use this product here. So this is cream polish. This is how we add like a subtle soft dye. Because it's so diluted, it doesn't stain the shoe as easily as something like an alcohol-based dye. So what we're gonna do is take our cloth and wrap our fingers in it just like before. Again, because it's important for dyed products to be distributed evenly, that's why I like to use a cloth because this just helps even out the pressure that you're using and cover more area so that you don't actually end up with dyed product kind of layering on a little too much on one area versus the other. And we're just gonna take a small bit. We're just gonna apply that to the sole edge and rub it all around. Try not to get it on the upper itself as you do this, but if you do, it's not you know the end of the world. Just rub it in to make sure it's blended where it touches the upper. We're gonna be doing this to the upper as well in just a moment, so not a big deal. This product also has some waxes in it as well, so it'll provide some protection and some shine when we brush it up. And now you may be able to already see, this actually does really very quickly restore the color, so any of that slight discoloration from any scratches and scuffs, this is gonna make that look really sharp. And the sole edge is often neglected. Not a lot of people even do anything to the sole edge of their shoes or boots. And they look, you know, it's those small details that people notice but won't say anything about that really kind of the sum of which make your boots, your shoes, your whole outfit look quite nice. And so even though you might think people not, not won't notice or it's not a big deal, honestly, having a sharp sole edge really looks great. I have a whole tutorial on how to really nicely finish your sole edges to the point where they're basically competition grade, you know, if you want to call it that, super shined, basically like a mirror shine sole edge. You can check that out, that's a great video. But otherwise here we're just doing a basic restoration. We're gonna hit the heel as well.
And I'm just doing one, you know, kind of one and one and a half, maybe two layers. I'm not being super specific about it, but you don't need to do a whole lot, right? So that immediately just sort of re-darkens and re-richens that brown color. You know, if you're finding there are areas that the color isn't quite coming back, you can maybe just hit it with another light layer. We're going to hit this with some colored wax in a moment too, so you don't have to get too aggressive with the cream polish, because we're going to put even more color on these. Super quick, looks great. Same deal, we're just gonna let this sit five minutes, 10 minutes, and then we're gonna give it a brush. And we're just gonna give us a quick brush, just like before. And again, you can see how there's waxes in that cream polish and immediately it starts to shine up that heel and sole edge, which is pretty great. Now you could stop there. I mean, those look great. But we're gonna take it to the next step, again, because this is really a full restoration, a full transformation that I wanna show you guys today. So now we are going to take our wax. This is from the company Saphir. This is their basic brown wax. You can see it's just a dark brown. Conditioner, cream polish, wax. They all have various levels of waxes or oils that condition the leather but fundamentally they have three primary purposes, right? Conditioner restores the structural integrity of the leather by lubricating its fiber structure. Cream polish restores color to the leather by being essentially an in-between of wax and conditioner, but with dyes added. And then wax is made to protect the leather. It really doesn't condition the leather much, if at all. It's made to coat it and protect it. And along those lines, we're gonna do that to the sole edge because of course the sole edge is the part of the shoe that's most subject to wear. And what's nice about this process is that it also fills up some of those because it wears unevenly. So what we wanna do is get it nice and smooth again. And now when I'm doing this guys, there is almost no actual wax on my finger. It's more just like a thin layer of melted wax, right? What you don't want is something like that. See that? There's like actual wax on my finger. You don't want that. Scrape all that off. Just want a nice thin layer. I mean, we really don't want to use a lot of this. And we're just going to do like one layer all around the shoe. all around the sole edge, excuse me. One thin layer, okay? You don't want this stuff caked on, just one thin layer. Once you apply it, it'll almost feel like you haven't applied anything at all, and that's kind of a sign. It should feel like you're not using enough, right? That should That's like a sign that you're using the right amount. 
is if you feel like you're not really using enough. And this is kind of one of the last keys, guys. This is, guys, this is one of the last like pieces to the puzzle uh, that a lot of people miss of literally making your shoes look brand new despite them being maybe even several years old is taking care of the sole edge and heel block. So now once we have a small layer of wax on there, we're gonna move on to our next step, which is brushing. No, that's actually not our next step. And that's because our next step is something even cooler than that. And also the reason why we are doing this before the uppers. This is something you've probably not seen before. This is called a sole edge iron. This is also by Paul Brungard. This is modeled actually after a tool that real shoemakers, cord wainers, use. However, those tools are a bit more expensive and also more specific and harder to use. This is essentially a consumer grade, consumer friendly version of the product. And this is, as, as you would expect, being called a sole edge iron, a tool used for ironing the sole edge of your shoes, of your boots. And what that does is it helps recompress the leather of your sole edge to help restore kind of some of the structural integrity of it, but also re-smooth it out so that it can be restored back to essentially brand new condition. And so what we're gonna do is use this end of the sole edge iron, and it's pretty intuitive, guys. I mean, you can't mess this up, though I'll give you some tips. Start by just applying a little bit of wax to the inside of the tool just to lubricate the tool itself. And this is why, guys, we stopped doing the upper where we did because we're gonna apply cream polish and wax to the upper, but now since we have this resting on our lap, on a cloth, it's gonna kind of rub against the upper. I'd prefer to do this before, and the reason I'm doing it on my lap is because we're using real pressure here, right, guys? So you're just gonna start with the iron and you're just gonna press against, you can use the groove of the iron, kind of couch it into the groove of the sole edge and that's a big one too, is that the edge, the actual bottom corner of the sole edge wears away a lot, as you can imagine. So this, is, it's really nice to recompress that. And you're just gonna go over this. And it takes a little bit of time. You really wanna be firm with it as well. I like to go around the whole boot or go around each section like with a lighter once over and then get really firm with it to really compress the leather. Again, the outsole, the welt, these are really stiff leathers, so you don't have to be afraid about using some real pressure here. In fact, you kind of need to in order to properly compress it. And sometimes you'll want to kind of like choke down on the tool just to make sure you're getting full coverage. It won't always work out to be like a perfect angle with it couched in the corner just because of how the sole edge is angled and the size of it for each shoe or boot. So it's nice because this isn't just a cosmetic thing, it is also a structural thing to help it last longer. And then it also really pushes that wax into the leather, embeds it into the sole edge, which is really what we want. We don't want it just sitting on the surface or just lightly in the pores, we really want it embedded into the sole because that'll give it the most protection and the most longevity. It also helps, you'll notice over time, your sole edge, the outsole edge and the actual welt will start to overlap a little bit as they shrink at different rates. This can help recompress them just to help flatten that out so you don't have this unsightly overlap going on. And you're gonna feel some drag that's okay, it's also like you're gonna feel some friction. That's okay, it's not gonna glide like super smooth. Just make sure you have that one layer of wax both on the tool and on the sole edge to provide it that important initial lubrication. Now we're gonna go around to the front of the toe.
And it's great. As you're doing this, you can kind of check with your finger and feel it. You can hear, hear that squeaking? That's because not only is the wax impregnating itself into the leather, but the leather itself is smoothing out, giving it an almost like rubbery texture on the outside, but not rubbery in a bad way, like rubbery in a good way in the sense that it's totally sealed, right? This is super exciting to me, this is cool. When I found this st stuff out, I thought it was super cool. I mean, this tool, like nothing else on the market, I'm not trying to sell you guys this, I mean, I, there's nothing else on the market that no one else has this kind of product. So I thought it was a really great innovation by Paul Brungard to make this thing. And you know, it's like it'll last forever. You're not gonna, you know, it's solid walnut, so it's not going anywhere. And uh, it's just great. And again, guys, leather being a pretty stiff material, I mean, you could do this for a little bit, right? If this isn't a quick once over like our other products, you could do this for maybe five, 10 minutes. I would basically just use your judgment, right? Like keep doing it until the leather's kind of at a place where it feels like it's not doing much anymore. The toe area can be a little tricky, so, you know, you just got to be patient. Can't really do the heel with this, but that's okay. I mean, the heel won't really erode away in the same way as the actual edge. But I wouldn't, I mean, I tried it. I wouldn't even bother trying to like mess around with the heel with this. It doesn't, just doesn't work that well. And also be careful what you don't want to do. You might see me do it a little bit lightly. Uh, that's okay, lightly. And also again, why I like to do this before finishing the upper itself is sometimes you might accidentally graze the tool against the upper as you're kind of hitting it at a certain angle. Uh, again, try not to do that like too bad. It's okay if it does it just a little bit, but you know, don't like accidentally like do it in a way that kind of scratches the leather. So again, it's pretty foolproof. It's pretty easy to do, but uh, like anything, you just still want to be cognizant and considerate and careful as you're doing it. I feel like my voice isn't ASMR enough. I mean, it's not an ASMR video, but I feel like I need a more ASMR. Maybe I just need to start doing mukbangs. That's what this channel is going to be. It's just me like, I'm just going to start eating a bunch of pineapples or something on camera. And that's going to be dressed well. That's going to be my legacy. Like that guy who like started off making video, really helpful videos about shoes and then uh, just started eating pineapples on camera. All right, well, the fact that I just said that is probably a sign that we're all set here. I just want to kind of hit this one last area where I'm kind of ironing out some of that overlap. You know, obviously it's not going to be perfect, but you do what you can. So that's pretty good, I feel pretty good about this. Super. So now we're gonna finish up the last step here to take care of your sole edge and heel is we're gonna apply just one more layer of wax. If you're feeling like you take these boots, maybe it's like the middle of the winter for you or you tend to take these boots out in like kind of rough weather, you could even apply two, but I wouldn't apply more than two. Again, then, then it's just kind of caked on to a point that like it'll start rubbing off on stuff, which you don't want it to do. 
Um, that's why, again, with all these products, more is gen not necessarily better. So we're just doing two layers total, one initial layer, then we ironed, and now we're doing one last layer. My goodness, okay, the saw iron is like wobbling on the table. I need a new table where things don't wobble, where it doesn't shake around. I'm sorry, please forgive me. And like and subscribe. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm losing my mind. Okay, there's more, what else is, something else is wiggling. It's the cream polish. That's enough. Is anything else gonna wiggle? Okay, I think we're good. <laughs> my God. There's voices in my head. We're gonna hit the heel block too, just one last layer so we get that second layer on the heel block. Ooh, I would see like that. I don't know if you have, well, what you guys could tell that. I was a little bit zealous, overzealous, kind of put on a little bit too much there. Again, not a huge deal, but we'll do that. And we're gonna brush this. Okay, we're gonna brush this. I'm gonna give you guys spoiler alert in case you didn't think of it before uh, or you didn't suspect it, but we're gonna brush this again and that'll give it a nice soft shine. What you could do, you can do it, and I do it in the tutorial where I talk about my sole edges. I'll put a link in the description if you guys wanna check it out. You can literally like mirror shine this, right? You could put on maybe one more layer and you could mirror shine it in the same way you'd mirror shine the toe cap of a dress shoe. And uh, it looks stunning. I mean, it looks great. I don't know that you need that. I don't know that I would do that, honestly, for a boot, unless it's like a really nice dress boot. But uh, for just like a more functional boot, it might look a little out of place to have like this super, super shining sole edge. And then the, you know, it's just like a, a normal boot, right? But you could if you wanted to. And so it looks great. So we're just gonna let that sit for like, again, another five minutes, 10 minutes. You want to hit kind of that sweet spot where it's just soft enough that it'll still evenly distribute, move around and also it'll gloss, it'll shine from a brushing but you don't want it to get to its maximum hardness. So I find that like 10, 5 to 10 minutes tends to be the best time, maybe 15 if you're in a humid environment, but I wouldn't wait like an hour or two. See how quick that is? What's that wild? That was like two seconds and it went from totally bland. You should rewind that section, see how it was just before. It goes from totally dull to like, literally, it's got a not beautiful soft shine on it. Especially the heels where you can really see that too. And so, and that shine, it's not just, you know, an aesthetic thing. It's not just that it looks good, but it's also kind of an indicator that you have a very smooth surface that allows for the shine. And what that smooth surface means is that it's gonna be pretty impenetrable to outside, you know, environmental oils, water, things of that nature, anything that might accelerate the deterioration. Looks super sharp, perfect for, you know, a boot that's kind of like a little bit dressy. These are about as close to brand new as you could get. I mean, if I really wanted to spend a whole lot of time with the iron, I could probably totally flatten this out to the point where it is brand new. But, uh, you know, that would, that would be a little bit excessive. I let the shoes sit for just another 20 minutes or so just to let that wax fully dry out, fully harden on the sole edge. And now we're gonna get back to finishing up the upper by starting once again with the cream polish. So similar to the sole edge, the cream polish 
We're gonna use the cloth here because we want to prioritize even distribution, especially here on the upper. You could use your fingers, it's not the end of the world, but again, I just prefer to use cloth. Now this is to restore color to the boot. So I'm using a dark brown here. If you really wanted to, you could use a, maybe like even a burgundy or a red if you wanted to just give a little more dynamic color, but a, a brown is fine. And I would always stick with a color that's slightly darker with the, than the color of the leather if you have to make that call, if it's not a perfect match. Just because uh, this stuff will have a very subtle impact. It's not like it's going to darken the leather a ton. But it's better to go a little bit darker because it can look kind of weird if it if you use a lighter color brown as opposed to a slightly darker color. I found. All right, we've got a cloth, so the cream polish will not wobble on the table. And I like to do one layer all around, okay? Just one even thin layer all around. And then if you feel like there are bigger areas that are missing color, like for example, you can tell, you know, the front panel, the top of the front panel here is fine, whereas around the sides, where the boot has seen the most where the color has stripped down. So I might apply an extra layer or two on this area just to darken it up because it needs to be uh, darkened a little bit more than the front. So you can do that as well. You can just sort of make that judgment. And again, this stuff is really forgiving. So don't worry about like staining your boot. As long as you do it in thin layers evenly, you'll be fine. And so that's a big thing too. If you feel like you need quite a bit of this, don't uh, do one heavy layer, do multiple thin layers always with all these products. This is, uh, you know, you, you might wanna, if you feel you've gotten the message, you can skip ahead as well. This is going to be a bit of a longer section because we are gonna do multiple layers on the boot. I might do two layers all around and then one layer on, I'm sorry, and then an additional layer on the sides where it needs a little bit of extra. The wax, we're gonna wax this too, and that wax has dye in it as well. It's very minimal effect to the dye of the wax, but it does have a tiny bit of effect. So if you feel like you're like almost there and it just needs a tiny little tint, maybe just avoid that extra layer of cream polish and stick to a wax. The nice thing about a cloth too is you can work pretty quickly uh, and be, you know, you might accidentally like grab a little too much out of the jar, but because the cloth itself kind of soaks up cream polish a little bit, it'll automatically sort of adjust to spread out and absorb if, if you kind of use a little too much. You don't have to be, you know, when I'm doing the conditioner, you see me a lot of like dip my hands in and then kind of scrape a little bit off and go back and forth that way. With the conditioner, you can be just a little more liberal, a little faster. So this stuff also has waxes in it, much like the conditioner. It's kind of a spectrum, right, where the conditioner has the most oils and the least amount of waxes, but still some waxes. Polish has kind of a 50-50 split, and then wax itself is gonna have kind of almost entirely waxes and not a whole lot of conditioning oils in it, if any. Try not to, you know, disturb the sole edge too much since we've already waxed and brushed that, but if you do, it's not a big deal because, again, 
if you get a little bit of cream polish on that, it'll just buff out when we do the brush. And see, that was like kind of, you know, I kind of like got a lot on there, but that's okay. You just kind of be pretty liberal, pretty generous, pretty quick with it going all around. And so you might be able to see already this area is like looking pretty good. Like the color already, just one layer has really evened it out a fair bit between that upper area that's less touched and where it's lightened up quite a bit where it's been worn through here. The toe cap too is an area because it gets more wear and lightens up a bit. You might want to consider putting an extra layer on the toe cap as well. But I'm just going to let this sit. Honestly, just five minutes is fine just to let it get a little bit more dry and then I'll come back and do a second round. All right, round two, just a few minutes later, and do the same exact thing. Cream polish is also great for like, as your dress shoes or boots, they'll just naturally fade in color over time as, you know, the leather wears very slowly, very gra gradually, and the color just kind of gets bleached naturally by the sun, as, you know, happens. Cream polish, just one layer, is a really great way to restore kind of the richness of the original color of the boot. You guys can kind of imagine, right, if we were doing all that sole edge stuff while we're doing this, the towel upon which we rested the boot, or if we did the sole edge stuff, sorry, after this, that towel would kind of scrape off a lot of the work we're doing here because we were pressing so hard with the sole iron. One important note make, to make on this stuff, the wax, the cream polish, even using this towel, uh, but certainly if you're using your bare fingers for any of this stuff, it will stain your fingers lightly, you know, and I say lightly. You'll be able to wash it off just underwater to the point where, you know, it's just like a light stain on your fingers, and that'll go away in like two to three days, maybe not even, maybe just a day, you know, so it's not like a permanent stain, don't worry if that happens to you. If you do really need to get the stuff off, you can rub your fingers under like 70%, 90%, especially isopropyl alcohol. That'll basically get it all totally off uh, for almost the entire part. If you really wanna make like no risk, maybe you have something like really important, you've got your first big hand modeling gig, you know, um, what you can do is just wear gloves. Just wear basic nitrile gloves while you're doing this. Same exact process, and that'll keep your fingers totally protected. And then you'll land your hand modeling job, and you'll use that to get a career in television, and then use that career in television to launch a successful real estate career. Obviously.
What I find super meditative and just like fascinating about doing this process is watching the boot transform in real time. It's kind of why I wanted to, why, why I like these full uncut guides. I like them for a variety of reasons. Um, but I like the fact that you guys get to see kind of what I'm seeing, get just to see this thing like transform in real time. It's not like cut between shots and it's, it's kind of crazy. I mean, it's a, it's a really, I find leather such a fascinating material because of how just like totally unreasonably resilient it is. It's, it's pretty incredible. I mean, I'm not sure we have any material that even comes remotely close to having the properties of leather while also having the kind of durability and longevity of it. You know, I mean, if you just do like basic leather care for a piece of leather, will basically, we'll basically make it last forever, right? I mean, there's like thousand year old ruins and stuff, artifacts that we find of like leather shoes and stuff that really, really old and, you know, old humans have made, early humans. And, you know, it's not like those were, <laughs> have been conditioned for the thousands of years they've been buried or whatever. And, uh, you know, they still exist. They didn't just totally disintegrate. It's kind of really interesting. So that's that second layer, and honestly, I think I will, especially this side really needs it, I think. It needs that that like extra layer, but honestly, I mean, I could, I could barely tell that it needs that extra layer. And I'm just, I'm not even gonna wait. I'm just gonna do it right now. I think it's fine. We're just gonna do it live. We can give it that extra layer. That'll just give it that shade darker that we want it to have. And then I'll probably do it on the toe as well. And just give an extra shade on the toe cap where we've had really a lot of wear. Right, and so that's what's so great about this stuff is as long as you blend it, it's a really light shade it's gonna impart. So like, you can feel free to just sort of like spot, spot it, like spot check this stuff, like spot apply this stuff. And a cream polish in general is something that, you know, if you get your boot a little, you just get a small scuff on it, you know, just in your daily wear. I mean, you can just take a small dip of cream polish and apply it on and it'll, it'll make it, it'll just fix it right up. You know, so it's not like you have to always do like this full restoration to use cream polish to apply the color back on. You know, there's a tiny bit I can see just where the welt meets the upper where there's some discoloration. I think I'm kind of getting it here by like getting really aggressive trying to get my finger in there. But if you really wanted to, you could probably use like a toothbrush or something again. But I wouldn't worry too much. I mean, at that point, you're talking about such a, you know, you're hanging around the wrong people if someone's taking a microscope to the, where your welt <laughs> meets meets your upper uh, to critique your your color, <laughs> your restoration on your boot. But uh, yeah. So again, I think that looks great. Again, we're gonna put a little more color on this when we do the wax, so I'm not too concerned about any super super subtle discoloration that remains. We're gonna let this sit. You know, again, before we've done like 10, 15 minutes, I think I'll probably let this sit closer to like 15 to 20 because we've put a couple layers of the cream polish on, so I want it to dry like a little bit more, and then we'll give it a second brush. See again how quickly that shines up. So fascinating. Again, kind of technique here. We're going at multiple different angles, kind of all over the boot. Wherever you need to, this is especially important with dress shoes that have multiple panels, because you want to hit every angle of the boot that you can, every small crevice or anything like that. But then you want to finish the whole boot, the whole shoe, with unilateral, unidirectional swipes, so that the, the gloss 
the shine is even and the grain of the shine is all in the same direction. You know, I said earlier that shoe trees are optional. Honestly, I'd, I think I'd take that back. I think you really need shoe trees in. It doesn't even have to be shoe trees. It could just be like paper or something that you really stuff in or a cloth that you stuff into the front of the boot. But you, you need something. You need something to hold the boot's shape while you're brushing, while you're applying the product. Again, you can hit the sole edge and heel again to make sure if you got any cream polish on it from last time, just clean that up. I mean, it looks great, you know, it looks great. Again, you kind of could stop here if you wanted to. You've got the waxes for protection, you've got conditioning, you're restored on color. That final step will just, just give us the last kind of icing on the cake as far as protecting this boot. So I'm gonna let this sit now actually for probably a few hours, I'd say two to three hours. Maybe you could do five or six in a more humid environment because before we apply the wax, which starts to kind of seal up the boot a little bit, I wanna let the cream polish set and dry, make sure any oils or solvents that are in the cream polish kind of volatilize off. All right, we are back and we're gonna do our final step here. This is the last step, guys. We are going to wax the boot. So wax, of course, I've said before, its primary purpose is to protect the boot and it does that by kind of sinking into the pores it essentially you know prevents the other things from intruding the leather staining it uh, water getting inside it provides you know a certain degree of waterproofing to the leather itself which is really nice adds a little bit of color again it's just a great way to preserve the life of your boot same deal with the sole edge same thing as before again very very little you can always add more we're really just doing, it should feel, once again, like you're not even using enough. And that's the right amount. So you're just gonna do this in layers. When I'm putting my finger in to grab more wax, I'm not even like scraping any wax, right? I'm just sort of like gliding my finger along the surface of it. And that just naturally, just the warmth from your finger kind of melts a little bit of the wax that gets on your finger and you apply that. So really small patches is kind of the way we're working here. And what I think I'm gonna do, you know, I think I'm gonna do two coats all over the shoe, the boot, and then maybe a third coat just on the toe cap where it sees the most wear and also could use maybe a tiny bit more color. I wouldn't do more than three coats, if that even. You know, again, if you're in the dead of winter in a place like Manhattan or Chicago, three coats might not be a bad idea. Three thin coats, but you don't really want to do more than that because if you start to do more than three coats, I find the layer of wax starts to get thick enough that it'll actually crack on areas of the boot where the leather is flexing, which is much of the boot, right? Again, you can see I'm being pretty generous here. 
not being super careful. I always like to keep things practical, right? You want to keep, you know, you want to kind of keep things moving. You don't want to spend your whole day doing this kind of stuff. Um, although you can be meticulous with it if you'd like. I mean, a lot of people just do this just because it's, you know, a nice sort of meditative activity, which, which it is. And again, I'm not worrying, I'm far more concerned about missing a spot than I am overlapping. So if I'm concerned that I might have missed a spot, which you can usually see because the wax will start to kind of give a haze so you can identify where you've waxed and where you haven't. But if I ever suspect a spot hasn't been done or I'm not sure, much better play it safe, just tag it again um, as opposed to miss it and then you have an unwaxed spot. Same thing with the cream polish, you know, try to not touch the sole edge too much, but if you do, not a big deal. It'll just come out when you brush. Good example, right? <laughs> like, I, I'm pretty sure I got this little tail end of this panel here, but I wasn't sure. Kind of can't, can't exactly remember, so I'm just like, whatever. I'll just hit it again. Not a huge deal. Looks great. So I'm just gonna leave this, five, again, five minutes. That's all it needs before going on to the second layer. And we'll be back. All right, we're back for round two. I'm just gonna do the same thing again. And while I'm doing it, I think this is kind of a nice time to talk a little bit about why this is so compelling. You know, I mean, this video will be however long it is, but guys, if I'm doing this on my own time, maybe an hour and a half for both shoot, both boots, for the full pair, to do this entire process. Hour and a half total cumulative work time, right? Obviously there's wait times in between. So not too, not too long, right? This is a full restoration. I mean, maintaining these going forward, I would do substantially less, right? To actually make, do a session of maintaining, you know, your boots or shoes might just take, you know, 10, 15 minutes cumulative work time and maybe one or two waits for the products to dry, whatever you're using. I have other videos on that if you want to check them out. So that's, you know, that's a lot of time compared to going, and I do it from the comfort of my own home, like compared to how, you know, how often would you need to go to a cobbler back and forth to do this or to routinely maintain your shoes and boots, right? It's not just about this full restoration. It's about the very, the, the maintenance you do after and how easy it is for you to do. And then these products, you know, everything I'm showing you here today, it's cheaper than one visit to a cobbler, but I'm sorry, it's more expensive than one visit to a cobbler, but it's cheaper than maybe two or three visits to a cobbler, right? And these products, one tin, one jar of any of these things will last you several years, right? So you're actually saving a lot of money doing it on your own and a lot of time when you think about driving back and forth to the cobbler. And then, you know, they want to hold on to your shoes or boots for a few days. So now you have time where you can't even wear them. I mean, it's just a pain. And then you have to pay them and all that. I actually have a video where I break down kind of more mathematic, more, more mathematically the cost of going to a cobbler compared to doing your own shoe care. And when I actually did that video, I was pretty shocked myself by the numbers. I was like, dang, I'm saving a lot of money doing it by myself. So it's a little bit annoying to learn, but honestly, it's not a super intense skill. You do it two or three times and then you're kind of like, oh, okay, I get this. It's pretty straightforward. 
So I think it's a point I kind of want to make is that this isn't just like, oh, you know, I do this because I like it or because I'm like really interested in these products. I mean, yes, but it's also because like my boots and shoes are kept in better condition than they would if I went to a cobbler. You know, I take care of them myself so I have better control. I save money and I save time. Both those things, you know, pretty important to me. My shoes too, obviously pretty important to me. You know, I'm not sure most cobblers would even do everything we're doing here. Um, you know, and, and there's very few cobblers that would give it like a really, really good treatment. Um, I know there's a lot of cobblers. I mean, it's not, there's not even that many cobblers that carry like Saphir products, you know, these kind of higher end quality products. I'm not knocking cobblers, you know, but it's just a reality. They don't, you know, need to. Especially around here in Denver, right, where people don't really wear this kind of stuff that much. Manhattan, Chicago, you'll probably have a higher frequency of higher, um, higher quality cobblers, but out here it's pretty sparse. And it's also like you, when you know how to do this, you feel less anxious about using your $200, $300 boots or shoes because you know you can bring them home. Like I can walk around in the woods with these boots on for filming or whatever it is, and I can just knock them around. I don't have to worry when I'm walking places, oh my God, do I trip and like stub the toe of it or scratch it up or something? Because I know I can bring them home in like 10 minutes, I can make them uh, we can fix whatever problem has happened or like if i go months or something without taking care of them and they get all messed up the way these boots were when i started this process no problem because i can bring it back to brand new and at this point i don't even have to pay anything because i already have all the stuff to do it and i'll have that stuff for many years so here i am the fu <laughs> I need to get somehow find find out find to get a commission from a shoe care trade group, sorry, a shoe care lobbying group or something, so I can get a commission for selling people on doing their own shoe care. <laughs> yeah, like, oh my god, my life. So that's great. I'm going to actually just give one more again, one more hit on the toe here. Just one more layer. And it's like, I'm sure there's people watching this who are like, oh, well, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, and you're like, well, you know, you shouldn't do this, or you shouldn't do that, or you're, you're being kind of sloppy here, being kind of sloppy there, and Honestly, like, I think that's like, I, I'm not here to disagree with that, but I almost think that's a great thing. And the point I really want to make with this video isn't like, oh, you need to do everything perfect or whatever. It's like, you can be sloppy. You can just kind of like do whatever and not think too hard about it. Like anyone can do this. That's my point, guys. That's what's uh, why I wanted to do this kind of full uncut guide is like, anyone can do this. It doesn't need to be perfect. And we're still going to get the results that, you know, you're going to see in a moment at the end of this video which will come in just a second here because what I'm gonna do now is wait again another like 10, 15 minutes. You know, if you did one coat of wax, probably five to 10 minutes. I did two coats of wax plus a third on the toe cap. So I'll probably give it like closer to 10, 15 minutes and then uh, we'll give it its final brush and see how it comes out. All right, super exciting. Last step, we're just gonna brush the shoe the same way we've done every time up until now. Take a look, you know, I keep meaning to pause to show you guys how quick it changes, but I already kind of ruined it so you can see. But you can already probably quickly see, I mean, isn't that incredible? A couple brushes. I'll even try to do half of it. I like to do just like half of it to show you. See, isn't that cool? You can see how half of it is shined.
Oh, last note, super important here. If you're getting, especially if you're getting the budget or mid-grade brush where the bristles aren't, you know, splayed out like this, where they're actually just straight up and down, really careful when you're getting the shoe or the boot, especially the interior here, it's super easy to nick to accidentally hit the handle against the boot and literally like scratch the leather, tear through these beautiful layers of product we just put on it, totally mess it up. So be really careful and be really cognizant. Everyone does it, happens to me all the time. If I wasn't doing using this brush, I probably would have done it already. This brush really helps prevent that because of how the brush uh, bristles are angled out. But just be cognizant of that, be really careful. That's why, you know, you guys see me moving really fast here. But when you first start out, you know, maybe just move slow, be careful. Don't be a uh, cavalier about it, right? Again, at the end of the day, you are still holding on to and taking care of a usually product that is worth at least a hundred, if not several hundred dollars. So, you know, give it the respect, treat it with the respect that it deserves. Treat your money with the respect it deserves. worked hard for it. All right, so you can see there, as I was kind of like turning around the boot, I kind of tapped the front of it on the table, and now that's fine. It's okay, but like, it's easy. It's just like so easy to kind of like accidentally ding the boot up, so when you're not thinking about it, so just be careful. Give it a nice, good brush. Get that sole edge and heel block too. Now, uh, lowered mid grade brushes have softer bristles, which means they're not as good at distributing product, but they're still gonna be good enough. I mean, you'll be totally fine with those brushes. This is a little better at that because it has stiffer, higher quality horsehair bristle, bristles. But what that also means is because this is stiffer and those lower budget brushes are softer, they'll actually make a slightly better shine because they're softer. For this, as you can see, I mean, this still makes a pretty good shine. But what I like to complement this with is this here, which is a yak hairbrush. So this is yak in the center. Because yak is super curly and like splays out, it's actually bordered by goat hair. Both super soft animal hairs. And I like to finish the boot with this. It's maybe hard to tell on camera, but this just really kind of lifts that shine and just polishes the last of it so you kind of eliminate some of those more clear brush strokes from the horse hair. And this thing is super fun to use too. It's like super soft. Just wanna like rub it against my face as a normal person does. So, so uh, we're just gonna do a little quick brush on this. Again, you don't need this. That horsehair brush still does a really great shine, but I'm doing it just cause I like to do it. And uh, this is also Paul Brungard from Arterton. And look at that, I mean, that is like, it's wild to think what this boot was, just like a couple hours, uh, you know, uh, a couple hours of work, but you know, just a day ago. Right, and look at that, I mean, isn't that incredible, guys? Am I, am I losing my mind here? Maybe I just spend too much time inside. <laughs> like, but it's kind of wild. I mean, it's beautiful, it's shined up so nice, the color's fully restored. You know, if you take a magnifying glass to it, you can till, still tell it's a worn boot. But, you know, for, for what it was, it's a pretty amazing recovery. And I, what I did is nothing that any of you can't do. Totally accessible. And, you know, maybe this shine, maybe even think, oh, well, that's even a little too shiny for me. That's okay. Maybe just do one layer of wax or maybe even just stop at the cream polish where you have a softer shine. You know, of course, the Yak Hair brush kind of lifted it up a bit, so you could exclude that. Right? I mean, it, it's kind of up to you. You guys can modify this however you need to. Well, I don't know how to end this video, but it's pretty cool. What I will say is if you enjoyed it, if you liked the video and you appreciate what I do, uh, I have affiliate links for all this stuff in the description. I'd love it if you use that. It just helps support the channel, helps me make videos like these. 
Uh, no extra cost to you. You don't have to use them if you don't want to, but if you do, if you found this video helpful, I appreciate it. Well, thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you soon.